following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. U.S. employment growth seen rebounding from slump. Stock futures plunge following weak jobs report. Those are two headlines that came out on the same day from the same newswire, and we'll talk about the differences in the the uh, the story and how uh, the media sometimes reports the exact same story in different ways. Uh, that'll be our headline story here in the first segment. Uh, I'm David Blaine, your host for All Things Money, here on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern, North, beautiful New Bern, North Carolina. Some of you may be listening to this or watching this on the internet, our website, www.dlblaine.com. You can find archived copies of the shows there as well as our contact information. If you have any comments or questions on the show, uh, send us an email, allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com, or we still use the regular phone, 252-633-0107. Okay. Okay. So, once again, U.S. employment growth seen rebounding from slump. The headline number one and number two, stock futures plunge following weak jobs report. These two headlines both appeared on April 9th, one at 3.39 in the morning, the other at 8.27 in the morning. And this is kind of a follow-up. A couple of months ago, I did a report when Lowe's company, the home improvement retailer, announced their quarterly earnings and there were two different headlines one said something to the effect that you know Lowe's has a bad quarter going out of business you know something like that the other one was Lowe's earnings beats expectation greatest quarter you know Lowe's is going to put Home Depot out of business I mean these headlines were completely divergent when you read the body of the story it was the exact same story this is the same thing here headline number one U.S. employment growth seen rebounding from slump. Okay, so employment growth rebounding. It says the March setback in hiring will prove temporary as the U.S. economy in its third year of expansion now is better equipped to overcome a slowdown in Europe and rising fuel costs, economists said, the, those economists. Number two headline, stock futures plunge following weak jobs report. U.S. stock futures fell, singling more Standard & Poor's 500 index losses following the biggest weekly retreat of the year after American employers added fewer jobs than forecast in March. And so once again, we see here that this economic data, which was the U.S. jobs report in March, and we see completely differing headlines coming from the same piece of news information. And when people ask me or they read something in the Wall Street Journal, they see something on CNBC, hey, I saw this you know, article or hey, I saw this uh, talking head talking about this. The bottom line is there's nobody knows the answer to most of these economic questions. How is this going to affect this or that? Nobody knows. And this is a perfect example. Two stories from the same newswire, same day different headlines. With kind of an aside, I was talking with a reporter. We get interviewed. I get interviewed a lot for a lot of publications uh, around the United States. And I was talking to one um, journalist one time about an article that, that I had helped write. It was some quoted in it. And the article was one thing. And, and I asked her, because the headline was really strange. The headline was sort of off from what the story said. And, and she explained to me that Although she writes the story, she doesn't get to pick the headlines. That the editors pick the headlines a lot. And I'm not, I'm not a journalist, but this is what this uh, young lady was telling me, that a lot of times the editors pick the headlines um, based on the story, but the journalists don't write the story. So this could be an example of this. You had two people writing uh, stories that had similar content to them, but the editors took a different bent on it, and uh, so the headlines came out different. So... Anyway, make sure you, uh, number one, are, are reading uh, different sources of information 
and don't always believe everything you read and certainly um, don't think you can profit by what you read in today's newspaper. Okay, another kind of a follow-up thing we've been talking about recently, the spiraling cost of education. A few shows back, we talked about inflation in the United States. We talked about historical inflation. We talked about how the headline CPI number is not always representative of what's happening. You know, we talked about the exclusion of food and energy costs from the CPI. We looked at some historical trends. We saw that apparel has actually declined in um, cost over the past 10 years, and we saw that um, energy costs had gone up the most, but right behind them, almost exactly the same, was education costs. That's right, education costs are one of the fastest growing or highest inflationary things in America. And I, and I postulated that one of the reasons for it is the high subsidies. Healthcare was also up there uh, with uh, energy costs, health care, and education. And because health care, the person receiving the care is disconnected from the payment of those services. When you have that sort of situation, you see oftentimes costs rising out of control. We're seeing that in education as well. You see that the actual students that go there a lot of times are not actually paying the cost. Um, the parents are not actually paying the cost. You have a lot of student loans, you have uh, subsidies, you have scholarships, you have all these type of things going into it to where the value of that education becomes sort of blurred by the fact that the people attending are not um, actually paying. Uh, for those of you who know me, I, I'm a graduate of uh, the United States Military Academy, but a lot of you may not know, before I went to West Point, Actually, I went to the University of Notre Dame. This was back in the mid-'80s, and um, Notre Dame was, is, and still is today, a very expensive school. I think today it probably costs somewhere around $40,000 a year to go there. Well, back in the, in the 80s, uh, it was about $8,000 um, tuition to, to attend there, and I remember that uh, there were kids there that, you know, there's very wealthy families, and a lot of the children, now this is not to, to say all kids, but there were a lot of kids there that didn't have to work very hard for the money to get there, I guess is the point. And they took the very education very lightly. Um, you also had kids that were there, they were working in the mess hall, you know, serving a mess hall cafeteria, you know, serving lunch, student lunches. They were working, you know, jobs. Some of them have jobs out in town to help pay for their tuition. And man, they really, really valued that education because of the immense sacrifice that they had to make. Well, other kids that just kind of showed up, it was paid for, um, didn't appreciate it as much. Well, we're coming up on our first break. When we come back, we'll get to the meat of this story about the spiraling costs of college in America. So for all things money, I'm your host, David Blaine. We'll be right back. <music> 